God's Vineyard Ministries, empowering lives, building society. Listen, be blessed and get ready to be empowered by God's Word from today's message. This morning, we're going to, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at the acknowledging God's mercies. Acknowledging God's mercy. And I would like you to turn with me this afternoon to the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, 21 to 23. Lamentations, chapter 3, 21 to 23. These I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. The essence of this message today is that the Lord. God wants you and I to acknowledge. And you cannot acknowledge if you cannot press a, 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 a recall button. A recall button. Many at times you look at what you are going through now to allow you a negative emotion. Negative emotion negative outlook of your future. Why? Because you are not pressing the recall button and recollect, acknowledge what God has done for you and therefore base your faith for the future in what you have acknowledged as what God has done for you. So this morning, look at the man called called Jeremiah was a prophet who at his very tender age, God appeared to him and said, I've called you. I've called you by you. I'm going to pull down strongholds. By you, I'm going to set nation on fire. I'm going to establish my will. I'm going to do mighty things. And the man said, wow, me? I'm a child. So from the world, God made him to know that anything that will happen in his life is not about him. It's about God himself. Everything that's happened in your life, having been called by God, saved by God, it's not just by you, but how you feel, but by God Himself. The events of your life, God intends to program it and orchestrate it and establish it. And that is the plan of God. Hallelujah. So this man was in depression. And many times, when you look at the circumstances of your life at part time, you have. Many times we worried, concerned, troubled, all kinds of negative emotions. We look hope, in, we lost, we lose hope in the future. Such was a man called by God, carrying the nature of God, calling the grace of God. But that means it can happen to anybody. And the only way you can get out of it is to learn to recall in any moment of your depression or down. When you are down, David said, Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Hope thou in God. You cannot hope in God if you cannot recollect and acknowledge the input of God in your life. Fantastic input of God in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, what it means of this year, the Lord, even this afternoon, want to turn everyone that looks at the future as being gloomy, God want to turn it around. As you also press a recall button, sit down and recall what the Lord has done for you, and that will not will create a positive attitude, positive, positive emotion. It will bring hope to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The man was weeping. He wiped up, he wiped his tears off. He changed his countenance because he recalled. He recalled God's deed in his life. He can't, nobody lay hand on him. He was not even in the church. He was all by himself. This morning I see deliverance taking place in Jesus' name. I see healing taking place because once you are conscious of what God is in your life, you attract the presence of God the more. When you can recall what he's doing and because it's the same yesterday, today and forever, you have, you are bringing to yourself the presence of God, the reality of his presence in the now. His countenance change. He was able, the man who was weeping was able to fulfill a glorious destiny. This morning, I'm, I come as God's servant to reorder the course of your life in line with the will of God for you. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. I come here carrying the mantle of his grace to tell you this morning as you sit back and begin to reflect and look one by one what the Lord has done. Everything about you will change because that is the beginning of your reliance on God for your future. The God of the past is the God of the now and is the God of the future. He does not change. Say amen. amen. He said, I recall. My recall is what gave me hope. So this morning, we want to re recall and acknowledge what the Lord, the mercies of the Lord in our lives. What is mercy? Hallelujah. Amen. Just before I move on again, turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 8, verses 18 to 21, NLT. We are going to read together this morning, NLT, God bless you. Genesis 8. Can we all read together? One, two, gently. So, one, two. So, Noah, his wife, and his sons, and their wives left the boat. Listen. <laughs> now, can you picture this very well? Where did the boat come from? I mean, the man just woke up one day. He looked around. This is the attitude of somebody who knows who we appreciate God. He just sit down. He's not talking about money. He's not talking about anything. He looked back. He saw the wife. Saw the ch the children. He saw. He saw um, even the pets. The every pet. He, you know, some people like pets. But God told him pick all these things. He picked them, and he saw when he opened his eyes, everything that's outside of the boat, they become corpses. They were all littering all everywhere. They are dead. So he remembered that what saved him was the boat. How did he come at the boat? Idea God gave to him. Idea God gave to him. The help God offered to him. So he saw that is the reason why myself, he was first mindful of the father that is alive. Because he knew that it is not his own making that make him to survive the floods. This morning, count your family as a ministry. We can count our numbers, including the radical youth that's everywhere. And we can say everybody's complete. Say everybody's complete. Yes, everybody. And that is the mercy of God. So people feel because we pray, pray, some people pray more than you pray. You know, I was standing with them this morning, this, this morning, of a family wanted to talk about, about inheritance. Because everybody I've mentioned it, those who wrote the will died in. Those who also, those who also, you know, are meant to benefit, but will they all died through COVID? Did they deserve it more than you and I? Or is the mercy of God? It went through our nations. And you don't know how much devastation that has done. We may be seeing it as figure and number on the TV, but these are lives of people. It wasn't something they deserved. They also were, they were, some of them were very careful. They were very careful about their health. They were very careful about what they do and what they don't do. But so the mercy of God is what actually determines what happens. I was sharing the morning this morning. I said, look, when you look at our country here, you, if you, except you go to the Office of National Stat Statistics and you see how many people die daily in, in UK roads, you will not know how to say for mercy. For every accident that happened, somebody was the it was error of somebody that led to the death of somebody. So the mistake that person, the other person make is just being in that place. If it's your car or my own car, the same fate would have suffered. So it is the mercy of the mercy of God. It will surprise you what God preserves us from, what kills people around us, what makes people end up in the in, in the graveyard right now. It's not something they deserve. It is just mercy of God. I was sharing with people this morning, the cancer incident is rising. Cancer is rising. Despite the knowledge that we have about cancer and many other incurable diseases, it's rising. I'm not able to give you a figure here now. And God has preserved you. Every day they make diagnosis of cancer. Make diagnosis of all kinds of destructive. So ladies and gentlemen, except you sit down, we're talking about life. We're talking about a flood that went and wiped away people, the mighty and the lowly, rich and the poor, Intelligent, non intelligent, beautiful, and some people. But God has preserved with just the mercy of God. The mercy of God. So Noah placed an order to be grateful to God. He said, This is the boat God gave me idea to build, and God used it to preserve me. 
He preserve your home, preserve your family. Amen. He also saw a number of people's houses. Some of them have skyscrapers. I don't know. I wasn't there. All of them leveled. Some people have businesses. They all crumble. They all swept away by this flood. Everything was leveled. And so look at this man. Everything he had with the seed and everything, everything was this intact. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are thanking God for your mercy, you have a job that you are doing. You have a job. Some people are even doing two jobs, three jobs. Amen. I want us to be, except you recall, you will keep on focusing on what has not happened. The prayer point you have prayed that has not happened. And it will rob you and create a negative emotion where you should really be grateful and look into 2022 with a renewed hope. Say amen. And I will receive grace for us this morning that this morning you begin to, begin to focus on what God has done and begin to see his mercy. Praise God. Quickly, what is mercy? I know we all know what mercy. I'll just quickly read it. I won't, I won't talk more about it. Number one, kindness, the kindness shown to us someone whom you have the right or power to punish. And you have the right and power to punish. An example was, thank God, God has not exposed your weaknesses, your shortcomings to human beings because human beings are very quick to judge. Human beings are quick to condemn. They saw the woman who committed adultery and they wanted to stone him. Thank God God has not handed you to those who are requesting and making allegations against your life. In the, in where you are not, in the boardroom, in the realm of the spirit, they have facts and they say, this is it before the Lord. And the Lord spoke and defended you out of his mercy. He didn't say you didn't do it. He didn't say she didn't do it. He didn't say you didn't make that mistake or do, you know, or angry with this or angry with that. No. He said, who has not? You that are condemned. Com that's how he's out of mercy delivered someone that's not deserving it. And that is the story, your story and my story. That God has not left us to men to judge, to decide our, our fates. He has not allowed the word of darkness to decide the fate of your family. God rose up. If the soul has not committed sin, let him throw the first stone. So the first part that happened when we talk about the mercy of God is that he just overlooks our sin. It's in spite of our sin. It's not without. But what Bible says, if you say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And we man. If I say we have no sin with this, I'll, say, I'll make him a liar. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Lord will not hear me. So if God is still sparing you today, it's because of mercy. Say mercy. And we need to recall it. Psalm 103, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord of myself and forget not his benefit, for he who forgive all your sins. Even if God doesn't want to do anything about it, there are there are forces that are asking and say, I'm playing, the Bible talks about it, there will be an accuser of brethren. Revelation chapter 12, accuser of brethren. But God does not allow your accuser to have their way concerning you and I. Say amen. amen. So we need to be grateful. That is the act of God's mercy. It's not something you deserve or something you work for. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It was in God's position and power to punish us. He did not punish us. He allows his mercy to, to triumph to over his judgment over your life. He allows his mercy to triumph over his judgment. Anybody want to offer to you? Praise God. Hallelujah. The second one I've just mentioned as the definition is a blessing that is an act of divine favor or, com or compassion. A blessing. There's any blessing you received that is not you have to compete for. You have, maybe it's an interview you did. Other people also are suitable for it. And God gave it to you. It is compassionate or kindly for... Uh, it's a blessing that is, is an act of favor or compassion. God makes to be preferred. If, if they should be preferred. And so I want us to look at the active that any blessing, any promotion, any advancement, yeah, your marriage... You're on your job, 
is a compassionate or kindly for them. When you have other people are losing their job, losing their home. Praise the Lord. And many times too, you can see kindness as being God for bearing and just, just being patient with us. Because if God were not to be patient with us, he will, a number of us he will have judged us and been patient. And I believe God is still with, patient with certain people today because God is not happy with what you are doing, but still patient and waiting patiently for you that you will repent and you turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, who are the people that have, somebody may be asking, have I really received God's mercy this year? If you fall into any of this category, yet you have. And start any of your prayers. Any of your prayers, you have enjoyed God's mercy. For the Bible says that if I regard iniquity, my God will not hear me. And it doesn't mean that you don't regard iniquity in your life. So God, has, if God has answered any prayers, it's because of, it's not because of your goodness or because of anything you do, but because of his mercy. Say amen. amen. If you have expressed forgiveness, if God has forgiven you your sins, and how do you know that you still pray and he answers you, he still blesses you, he restores the joy to you, the joy of salvation back to you. You have enjoyed God's forgiveness, then you have obtained God's mercy. Because what God does when he forgives us is that he pardons us and he cleans, cleanses us, cleanses every iniquity, every record of iniquity, he removes it, he brought them out. Hallelujah. If you have received them, three, if you have received any blessing, if there's any addition to your life, if there's any, any addition, any, any addition to your life, anything, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and hard no sorrow to it. If there's any new open door for you, if there's any new progress, any new promotion, then you know. If you have a new house you bought, if a new car you have bought, whatever it is that is an addition to you, it is God's mercy. Praise God. If we have witnessed protection from every, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, because thou art with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. So if God, you have been preserved, you have been experienced protection, it's because of the mercy of the Lord. If you have had provision, provision has come to you. The Bible says nobody can receive anything except it is given from the Lord. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 37, nobody can receive anything except it is given from heaven. Praise God. What of the very guidance? If on any reason this year God has guided you, you have received mercy from God. If there are any help you have received, either from men or God directly, it is an act of mercy. The Bible tells in the book of uh, the book of Psalm 89, verse 19, I'm the one that lay help to them that are mighty. I lay help, those who become mighty, I lay help for them. Your colleagues at work, your boss at work favors you. You, you know, I lay help. If anybody helps you, it's because God ordained it so. Say amen. amen. Praise God. Restoration. We're going to read the book of Second Samuel. We don't have to go and read it. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. The King David said, is there anybody of the household of, of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of uh, Saul that may show kindness and may show mercy to and he said, there's one man called Mephish, Mephibosheth. He's, he's crippled. But they said, no, it doesn't matter what the station of is now. I want to restore. It's an act of my mercy to restore every, every possession of his father and his forefather to him because of Jonathan. Restore everything. I want to let you know that if God, it is the act of God's mercy that brings restoration. Amen. Kind of restore. It brings restoration to home, peace, joy, whatever it is. It is the Lord. It is act of God's mercy. Say amen. If we have received second chance, second chance. A number of us, we have disappointed God and God still give you chance. Give you chance. It's because of his mercy. It's because of his mercy. I was sharing with them the morning when we, the ministry was going to start. For about two years, I was saying no, no to God. I don't want to. I can't be a pastor in this. In nothing. I want to pursue this. I want to pursue that. God said. And when I yielded to the glory of God, he said, I want, I'm giving you a second chance. There are so many areas of our life 
where God will have given, removed the opportunity, is presenting it again and again to us. Say amen. That is, many times it's a second chance in our career, a second chance that God has given us in our home, in our work, in our business, is because of God's mercy. And lastly, we can keep on counting victories. I remember that early battle rages. They are so the Bible says, "Thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph." Always, there are battles raging against our lives day and night. It is the Lord that fights our battles for us. That's why we are in. The devil is he, he wants to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I was sharing with them in the morning. I mean, and even during the first and second service, my wife was sharing with me about the account in Nigeria, one of the schools, very high, you know, you know, private schools. And the child was, was killed there because he refused to join the gang. You don't know what dangers are around our children. Do you know that you know people, if you are going to school in, in, our, in our Western country, in our society today, if a girl always go to school with, with a boy, because they, oh, they always they come around the same place and they walk, if there is a gang, we are a member of that gang, and wanted to befriend this girl, there's no established relationship between them, but because they are, they are working together all the time, he will say this is because of this, this, this boy as, is the one that's not allowed me to have this girl. All those talents you see, that's one of them. Those talents are not without a reason. And, our, and you cannot, some of them are told, don't ever tell your parents. Don't tell anybody. So they keep quiet. And so many lives are lost. What of those, you know, I share them in the, in the morning. Every time I go down my duvet, I say, God, thank you. Virtually every day. Because I see how cold it is. Tell these few days. And I go under my duvet, and I remember those who are on the streets. And they're on the street not because they wanted to. The devil do entice them with something that looked like a pleasure. Let me give you a scenario. Those who sell drugs, what they do is to stay around they're in our community. They watch a child who goes home, who goes home, nobody to welcome him when it's when when it's, so when they come into he comes alone, when it's going, nobody's saying, hey, welcome, open the door for them. They know it's alone, it's lonely. They go around them and get them. Train as you call it. They tend to touch them. Those children don't want to go into drugs. But when they buy all these things for them, give and say, you want to keep on enjoying this? Go and sell this. Try this. That's what happened. So ladies and gentlemen, you're talking about mercy of God. If your children have not fall vict- fallen victim, it is all the mercy of God. If your children are still, by the grace of God, they are still what you know them to be. That's been, no, what is this? Where are this come from? Where is this coming from? It is the message of God. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, ladies and gentlemen, why did God choose to have mercy on us? On you, on me. Say after me, why has God chosen to have mercy on me? Amen. Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 15 to 9, 16. Romans 9, 15 to 16. 16 NLT. Can we all read together? And I want you, for God said to Moses, show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show. Verse 16. Amen. So it's God prerogative. It is not because you choose mercy. It's not because you work for mercy. It is his prerogative. He just, he just, he just like, like the president. I know America. I know some countries. Every year, the president, or when he's living office, has the right to remove everybody, to pardon anyone. They call it prerogative of mercy. No matter what the offense of the person is, they can say it's free and it's free. That's the sort of God God does. He just single you out, single me out. It is not because we work for it or we wish it or decide it. It's because he gave it to us. Amen. 
So that is what you need to be grateful to God for. There are so many people, there are beautiful people out there. But in, I don't want to say more intelligent than you or me, but they are not, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't present the same success as you have. They can't, the story you have, they don't have that story. The success you have, they don't have it. And it's just because God decides to show you his mercy. Say amen. amen. Why will God show us mercy? Number two, because our God is a God of mercies. Our God is a God of mercies. He is merciful. Say God is merciful. God is merciful. You know, like we say, it's full of mercy. So if I pick up an orange and squeeze it, what comes out of it is what it's full of. Isn't it? Squeeze it. Squeeze it. So when you squeeze God, either in prayer, in fasting, amen, what you are squeezing him, what comes out of him? Mercy. No matter what you are going through, no matter what challenges you have, Problems you have, if you can, if because God is merciful. Hallelujah, Amen. Amen. Can you can you give us Ephesians chapter two quickly in the Amplified Classic? Amen. Before we even go to that, look at the book of Deuteronomy four thirty one. The Bible says, "For the Lord thy God is a merciful God." He will not forsake you. That's why you have been enjoying mercy. He doesn't forsake. Neither destroy you. Nor forget the command that he made with his father. So God in his nature, does not, he will not destroy you. He will not forsake you. That's why. Because that is his nature. You, that's why I want to encourage you. Put more and more. Squeeze God more and more. Lay a demand on him more and more. It was Henry Matthew in his commentary that says, when God wants to have mercy on his people, he set them on their knees. So when God wants to have mercy on his people, he makes them pray because your prayer make, squeezes God, if I can use that word. He lay a demand on God and what is in God comes out. What is in God is mercy. You enjoy the mercy. Say amen. amen. Praise God. Let's move on. Also, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 116, verse 5, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Our God is merciful. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians 2, 4, Amplified Classic. We will read this together. Hallelujah. Second, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4, verse 4. Can we all read together? Just the first line there. One, two. But God... So rich is he in his mercy. When you see an exclamation mark, it shows that this is, it doesn't make sense. This is unexplainable. This one, I cannot figure why. For so God so rich, so rich, so rich is he in his mercy that is beyond what our mind can can understand. It's way beyond our understanding. The way he, he shows his rich in mercy, you cannot imagine it. Your mind cannot conceive it. So that is what our God is. That is, is, is merciful. That's why he could make David, David with all that he did, because David was a man that knows how to place a demand on him, squeeze him. He will squeeze him. He will go back to him. Despite, and God keep on forgiving him. There was one man who enjoyed mercy. I will mention David. He was, he, you, know, you know all that he did within his life, but God still called him. He said, I will, he made a covenant with David that even when his sons sinned against him, I mean, against me, I will only punish the sons. I will not take my covenant away from him. Jesus Christ is still called the son of David, isn't it? The seed of David. That is to tell you about how great, how on a man, so you can rely on God's mercy. You can count on it in any situation you are. 
You can rely on it and keep on saying that no matter what you are going through, beyond you, against you, if you can rely on God's mercy, by the, 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 the two people went, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it gave us the parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And the Bible says after that illustration, two people went to pray in the, in, the, in the sanctuary. One of them used to fast twice a week. He used to give alms. He was called a Pharisee. He was, doing, he was ticking all the boxes. Very righteous. The other one just went there. He said, I just come, mercy. If you can, but you cannot depend on mercy if you have not acknowledged what message you have been enjoying. You cannot count it for years ahead and, have, and see a future beyond you if you cannot recall the message you have been enjoying. Say amen. So this morning I received grace for us to be able to recount. I, there is no way to describe. It's a mystery the way God releases his mercy. Amen. But we need to rely on it. Number two, why, or number three, why does God show us mercy? Because our God empathizes. Our God empathizes. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 4, 15, Amplified Bible, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling. A shared feeling. A shared feeling. Can you come? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You expect I was going to do this. God bless you. Now it's shared. Now, if you are, no matter what you are feeling now, I don't know it. So I can't put myself in my shoe, in your shoe. If you don't tell me, I don't know. But that's not God. What God does, that's a shared feeling. What you feel, he feels. That's what the Bible says. Amen. What you feel, he feels. When you're happy, he's unhappy. He feels it. So he can put himself in your shoe. And if that, he feels it when you feel putting himself in your shoe, he himself does not enjoy it, he will say, get you out. Let's put a hand to our, our celebrator. Our sister. God bless you. Is, please remember what I'm saying. Anytime you're going through any situation, God, you have a shared feeling with him. Why? Because you carry spirit. The spirit of God is in you, it's in God. The same spirit that is in you is in what is in God. What is registered? If you put a thermometer in me now, and you put the thermometers out there now, I mean, just, you know, it doesn't work. My thermometer will register what is in me. But if the same thermometer is, 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 is registering in me, it's registering in God. I'm feeling hot, it feels hot. Feeling cold, it's feeling cold. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, if you can count on his mercy, he empathizes with us. He doesn't just feel bad about you and leave you there because he himself is putting himself. Don't tell God, you don't know what I'm going through. No, that's not God. Mommy, not. I was sharing with them in the morning that many a times, not many a times, but occasionally, in the middle of the night, my wife would wake me up and say, ah, I just saw a, a small lump here. I said, can you touch it? I said, I need light. Can I see tomorrow morning? You know, God would never say that to you. You understand what I'm saying? Because it concerns her. That's why she's asking me. I said, I'm a doctor, truly, but can you wait tomorrow? And we see the light. God, you will never hear that from God. It's a God of now. Say God of now. So that's why I don't blame anyone. I want to be able to learn and understand and have this revelation. Whatever you are going through, is going through, and therefore refer to him. His mercy will make, that's what his mercy makes him to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why you have experienced him. Number of those mercies we experience is because he put himself in your shoe and he got you out of it. Amen. Number three reason why God has made us to enjoy the, the, the mercies we have enjoyed. Turn with me again to the book. It's because God is love. Say after me, God is love. In 1 John 4, 8, NLT, the Bible says, But everyone who loves, who does not love, does not know God. For God is love. Ephesians 2, 4, again, can we go back to it? In the Amplified Classic. Can we now read the old sentence now? One, two. But God 
so rich is he in his mercy. Now, they listen now. Listen, wait. why is he so rich in his mercy? In an exclamation with an exclamation mark. Why is he so? He's now giving us the reason. Let's because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love in which he loved us. Wow. So, what's your name again? Eh? Rosalie. Oh, Rosalie, you are, oh, this mask. Change your. Now, Rosalie, you can imagine. God will show you this great mercy. Why? It's not so much because of you. Because of the intent. In order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love he has for you. I mean, of course, no God loves you. Amen. Please, if you don't know, I want to know that when we were here sinner, he died for us. The reason why what God will show you mercy is not so much because of you. He's it's been motivated to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loves us. I mean, we, we, you have children, you have husband, or something you cherish in your life. Many times you don't consider because your, your daughter doesn't go to, you ask him to go and get you a, a spoon in the kitchen. He says, no, mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Will you see your daughter go into, step into a well and you say, because he didn't give you, anyway, let's serve him right. Will you do that? No. Will you do that? Why? Because you love her. Amen? You love her? So listen to me. What moves God to operate with us is his love. And that is his nature. That's who he is. He said, because of the intense, the great, the great and wonderful and intense love he has for you, that is why he will show you mercy. Say amen. amen. Say after me, God loves me. Amen. And I want you to be able to count on this love, the love of God that he will produce mercy for you. God will not, his love his mercy triumphs over his judgment. He will not judge you. God will not condemn you. God will have mercy on you if you can recall to him. Say amen. amen. Number four, for his purpose. Why have we been enjoying? Why did, did Pastor Alawali enjoy? You know, many times I see, my, even when my children were very small, I sat them down, and which God in Psalm 78 he encouraged us to do. Don't just be coming to church and they see you in the prayer band meeting, you pray, 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 or you come to the choir and they say, what is all this? They don't understand. Sit them down. I told my children that you wouldn't have had father. You wouldn't have come to this world. See what God did when I was in primary school. I told them the story of my life. They all know it. So they see why I'm running to after God. So if you want to enjoy God the way I enjoy God, come to him. I'm not doing God favor. It's me, him doing me favor. He spared my life. Ladies and gentlemen, but his purpose of God was because God has a need for my life. God did what? He has, if, maybe I told you I was seven in my family. I'm the only one to the glory of God that is alive. The power can swallow me up in a second. But the purpose of God made God to say, no way. Ladies and gentlemen, now will it be all right for me to not get to Nottingham and God say, come and be a pastor? And come and battle, come and I want to bring something called radical youth out. And I said, no, I don't want to. Now, will that be do I do I do I make make God feel sorry for himself? Feel sorry that why did all the investment I made is for this? Even I want to be a PhD surgeon and professor, I want to be this, you know, my colleagues are these, they live in big houses, they do this, only day every six months, two months. <laughs> Mr. Ye, will I, what will God do? Because I'm complaining myself, I'm not looking at where I came from. I'm not looking at the mercy God has shown me. I now get to England, I'm complaining myself with uh, Rosalind, Rosalind, I'm going to complain myself with uh, but I still do, I say it's a business tycoon, that's what I want to be. God bless them. That's what God did that left to do. But I must not compare myself with them. Say amen. amen. Think about where you are coming from. See what God has done in your life. Recall it. And give yourself to his purpose. Say, I will give myself 
to his purpose. In the name of Jesus. The reason why God would has been showing you mercy is because of his purpose for your life, which he wants to fulfill. Say amen. amen. In Romans chapter 9, 11 to 13 and 13, Romans 9, 11 to 13, but before they were born, he was talking about Esau and Jacob. Before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message. That is, Rebecca received a message from the Lord. This message shows that God chooses people according to his purposes. So Jacob didn't, didn't, not have, he didn't have to cheat. When he was asking for, for porridge, he didn't have to say, give me your birthright. He didn't have to do all that. It's already been ordained that he's going, God is going to carry the mantle of Abraham, his Isaac, the lineage, the con, con, convener we run through his life. You don't have to work, work things out by yourself. You don't have to compromise. You don't have to cut corners. You don't have to be smart by anything. Amen. Allow him to do what he's doing in your life. Or just yield yourself to him. Say amen. Hallelujah. Number five. Look at Romans 9, 20, 24, NLT. God has been granting us mercy and will grant you mercy because he grants mercy to vessels prepared in advance for his glory. If you are a vessel God has prepared in advance for his, to carry his glory, to manifest his glory, like Jesus Christ, amen. The Bible says, we beheld his glory, the glory of, of the only living one, the son of God. Amen. Thank you for helping me. All right? But you understand what I'm saying? But when he was born, when he was born, they wanted to, they killed all the other children. There were so many. The Moses was also, everybody around the Moses was killed. Because these ones were prepared to carry God's glory. Prepared in advance to carry his glory. Amen. God did everything to show them mercy. Say Amen. All right, let's read, let's read the scripture as we, as we, as we, as we talk. Now, look at Romans 9, 23, 24. Just read your own scripture now. NLT. Grant, he does this. He, God does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy, who are prepared in advance for glory. Say amen. amen. When, we were, when we were with God, we were full of glory. When we, when we sinned and for, took, sent, put, uh, we, we turned our back against God, we were, became short of glory. When Eli, son, often and finished, when they sinned against God, they said the glory departed. Ichabod. That's the glory that makes people shine in life. That's the glory of God that makes people have their standing in career, in anything. It's called glory. There are people God has prepared in advance to carry such glory. And what is important for you, therefore, if you're going to, that's the reason why God is showing you mercy. That's why God showed Moses mercy. That's why God shows Joseph. Joseph was born in the midst of his family where everybody hated him. Mr. Christina. Only his Julio brother and his dad. Other people hated him. How can you survive in that? They put him from there, put him in the, in the, in fact, they wanted to kill him. Almost kill him like this. And they think, man, there's no, let's not kill him. Let's put him in the, in the pits. That's the word, mercy of God. Almost. They put him in the pits. And, they put, and somebody bought him. And he went to Potiphar's house. But listen, listen to me. But one thing that helped him was that he said, I will not do anything that will make me sin against this God. That was what that did not allow him to, me, to miss the glory, weight of glory God was preparing for him. What glory was Joseph carrying? God would had ordained him when he was born to say that the old, that will be a time when we are a famine that can destroy the whole world. But this man, I'm going to give him a, a word of knowledge that is going to save the whole of Israelite nation and Egyptians. Amen. The glory. You can see the glory. Everybody was bowing to him. You know, it became the answer to problems of that then world. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what God, glory God is preparing for. That should make you inform how you live your life. Whether you live it to please God or you live your life anyhow. 
make compromises like anybody will make compromise. That is not what God has put of us. Lastly, sorry, number five, covenants. You, the cause of covenant, that's why many of them, some of us don't know this. Let me take it from a small level. Let me, let's read the scripture first. In the book of Exodus 2, 24-25, God heard their groaning. And remember the covenant promise he made to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and it's time to act. So he showed them mercy and delivered them. The number of deliverance we experience is because of the covenant God has, that is working on our life. Now, for instance, somebody is, is pregnant. A mother is pregnant, maybe for you or for me. And one day the pain was too much. and said, Daddy, if you can help me with this child, please. And in the groaning, he talked to God. And God responded. God responded. God responded. God responded. I said, yes, I will keep this child. So that if you keep on enjoying mercy, it's because something will happen. Beyond that is the Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood and established a covenant for you and I. And every time this blood of Jesus Christ speaks, he speaks mercy. He speaks mercy. He speaks mercy before God. Because that is the blood with which you have been purchased. Because of that. So what God is doing is become the covenant. You are a child of covenant. If you are born again, say amen. amen. Praise God. Lastly, number six. Hallelujah. Psalm 23. If you don't mind, let we all read together. Psalm 23 verse 1. Can you open... In KJV now, Roselessness, God has used you to be a, you're going to be a great preacher. God bless you. Stand up. Stand up. All right. All of you, please, let's read this very well as we round up. Say after the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Now, that was a personal decision by David. Now, whatever follows after that is, a, is consequent. You can see the semicolon there. So, the Lord is my my shepherd. Therefore, everything that now follows become, become automatic. I shall not want. Say amen. amen. And you can read it on and on like that. God bless you. God bless you. Now can you help me join? Can you follow me? Now, oh, I don't want to read because of our time. I don't know if you can follow me. What's your name, sir? Elijah. Elijah. I like good people. High five. Amen. amen. Now, keep on following me. Now, go and read the book of the, all those. Even, I, it makes me lie in the green pasture. He restored my soul. You know, I, even though I walked through the valley of death, he said, if still before me, in the presence of my enemy, my cup will run over. All those because he made the Lord a shepherd. Are you hearing me? You know, I know we, if you need to make that happen, all right, and that has to be sick, follow the father travel, experiencing him, and you know him. Now follow me. Amen. I change your name to mercy. I change your name to goodness. Keep on following me. Now, how did that psalm end? The last verse there. Sister Christian, I'm coming to you for a favor. I'm, you know, you have the power to promote me to any position. I'm coming. Come, just follow me. They have my back now. Now, now, everywhere I go, every door I knock. Say after me. You know, listen, because you lost my shepherd, this is following me all the time. What is difficult for people when I come to her, you will say, let's go. Because what, they are, what is following me is this. That's some people that are carrying curse upon them. Some people that are carrying you know, hatred upon them. Label of evil. But for me, when you make the Lord your shepherd, what is following you is what? Sure. Amen. Now, it doesn't say maybe. It says surely. It says surely. That means it's guaranteed. 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem is not making, making the Lord your shepherd. When you make him your shepherd, surely what follows you is goodness and mercy. Amen. So you knock any door. Mercy. Amen. Even you don't want to do it. <laughs> That's mercy and goodness follows. Amen. And God's goodness. So it's not only enough for us to be saying that after service as a slogan. If you don't make the Lord your shepherd, this won't be a reality. But if you genuinely, what does it mean to be the Lord your shepherd? I threw that question to you. Does he lead you? Do you go your own way or you go his way? 
Do you want to do what what he wants to do or what you want to do? Do you ignore him when things are happening and say, no, 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 I leave that to you to decide. Let's start to our feet, but God bless you. You are blessing yourself. Go and see them. That's your feet. Mercy of the Lord. When you meet the Lord, when you are a sheep and you are in the flock, he takes responsibility over your life and he makes sure his mercy, God's mercy and God's goodness follows you all the days of your life. I will dwell in His presence. Thank you for listening. We hope that this message brings impact and transformation to your personal life. Be sure to listen over again and stay tuned for upcoming messages and series on this channel. Empowering lives, building society. God's Vineyard Ministries.